um, Kenyans have been, the public sentiment has been against Adani for, for months now, it's starting with the uh, strike by the aviation workers and then Kenyans being against the deal. The government officers, including cabinet secretaries, uh, you know, putting on a brave face and saying, look, this, these people are clean. Even, even the opposition leader, the, the, the ODM leader, Raila Odinga, coming publicly and saying that uh, we, we, we've, we've done business with these people in the past, they are a good deal. What is your take on, on today's happenings where the president finally cancelled uh, the deals? Thank you very much. Uh, we first of all want to appreciate the president. He says that he's listening and it's the role of uh, leaders to listen and to act. So at least we know he's listening and he's heard what uh, Kenyans have said about Adani. But uh, like Kwame says, it's interesting that uh, he um, owed the decision to information that came in from friendly um, nations. And that's good. But uh, I think he needs to go a step further because if it is, wasn't about the deal, but about the uh, person himself, uh, we have reason to believe that the same person has other interests, for example, in the social health insurance fund and in Safaricom. So if the issue is with the person because he's indicted, then I think uh, we are still have some way to go. All right. Daktari, what's your take on this cancellation of the Adani deals by the head of state today? I think I agree with my, uh, with my colleagues that it's a, it's a good gesture, it's a good thing to do uh, with a lot of question around it. Question one, is how did we get where we are? Uh, our structures working. When we are told due diligence was done, was it really done? Now that we are here, we say thank you. But the next course of action is, are we going to pay? We remember once there was something like the, with the dams and we ended up paying from the taxpayers. Does this mean we are going to pay that money again? Or after cancellation, so what? And then we followed up. What about any other part of interest? Already Kenyans have a perception. And that if we have that kind of a perception, the truth is it'd be difficult to say we proceed with anything else as a country, as a team, with those kind of people. So if it's cancelled, it's cancelled. We say thank you to AG for having done that. But now moving forward is number one, the perception of Kenyans about that kind of issue is as a problem. Is the president listening? Yes, he's listening, and we hope. Now, after this, the next one, we listen to what will happen to NHIF and SHA. We listen to what will happen to housing levy. We listen to what's going to happen to the university. All those things we need to be listening and find out what's the next course of action. So that what we are, the, there is a book of lamentation. Kenyans have been writing a book of lamentation all through. Now we move from the book of lamentation so that we can start acting. We don't lament by him acting on those things. NHIF and Shah. In our opinion, where we see it, we said we cannot tell a patient to be patient until 2025. You cannot tell a patient to be patient, to have patience until he gets to the other side of life. So, is he listening? Yes. Let's move on to the right thing. All right. Now that you mentioned Shah, uh, we'll, we'll talk about whether because Adani is still in that, but uh, just to, to some of the to numbers to explain to us lay people, Kwame, there has been question of whether there could be some hidden things in the exit clauses of this uh, Adani, Adani deals. I mean, it's, it, it's, it's never easy to walk away from a contract. Um, I did hear one of the members of parliament saying that the president, what the president has done has uh, ended this debate. But uh, has he really? Could there be any hidden charges anywhere? Well, I think that's, that's a legal question. So the, right. the, the, the problem with, um, with what people are calling these concessions related to the airport and PIP or PPP agreements is uh, there were significant legal questions absent transparency about who's advising government and the obligations that government is taking on behalf of, of the Kenyan public and how, of course, that calls for claims, future taxes and uh, payments that have to be made. Um, so that's one. So I don't know whether those agreements, however far they've gone, because they've not been disclosed, 
whether it is possible for the government to unilaterally say, look, we walk back. I'm, I'm not too sure that that's, uh, that's possible. So that will be a legal question. And I'm sure uh, because of the nature of these transactions, uh, whoever it is who's the counterparty definitely has lawyers advising them. <laughs> mm -hmm. And they'd have considered and actually tried to cover their tracks in that way. So there might be, uh, it might be difficult to extract, extricate the country from this, it without a penalty. I suspect that is going to happen. Um, so I don't know that a presidential declaration is enough to actually repudiate a contract. I don't know that that's true. That's possible. But the problem with these, what we are calling the, um, the concessions, uh, be they the one for Shah, be they the airport, or the transaction regarding um, Ketraco, are not just that they are, bar they're, 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 they're clouded in darkness, they're actually very bad economics based on the transactions themselves. So if you talk about this, the 30-year deal, whoever it is is coming, has access to the property which, which belongs to Kenyans and at the same time has 18% claims, um, has access to land, right, to construct things and all that. Right. So basically they have no skin in the game uh, and all liabilities lie with Kenya. So that in itself is a bad, uh, the, 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 bad thing, the bad thing. So regardless of what the legal position will be, I think to extricate the country from this very bad economics is something that you might say, well, for good or bad, the president probably through pressure, definitely, because he's been quiet all along, through pressure has had to concede. And that's a positive, let's pocket that and move. Mm -hmm. so, so the president said that uh, we will be onboarding new partners. Um, you say these deals, uh, the way they have been crafted are bad. So what should the government do in terms of, uh, you know, re remodeling the Jomo Kenyatta International Airport? And of course, they say that our transmission lines, uh, we are almost 10 years behind yeah, in yeah. terms of, and that's the cause of the regular blackouts that we have. So what's, 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 what's the best way forward? Whatever language you use, this idea is not new. Um, the SGR, which is a disaster, a walking disaster, and we could have told a few years ago, they have a certain thing in common. The belief or coming out from something that we cannot all deny, that better infrastructure is something all Kenyans seek. And then on that basis, you go into an exclusive uh, argument with one firm, basically, without competition. So without competition and the declaration of the terms of the agreement, you know everything will go wrong like this has happened. So the lesson, and I wish Parliament could insist on it, instead of just applauding like little kids uh, applauding uh, a headmaster uh, at the parade, one of the first things they should insist is, what do we learn about what laws we can pass to ensure that there's no repeat or something like this? That you can actually have an, uh, an agreement given to Kenya if what the press says is a, they have an agreement given to a board in the morning, right? Several hundred pages and then in the afternoon it's already been approved and it's $800 million of taxpayers' money has been committed. I think that kind of speed is obviously, does not suggest good faith. Right. So unless we fix that, and I'm <coughs> thinking here, the scope to use a legal instrument. So it's not enough for parliamentarians to say we applaud. You should say, how do we make sure that there are transparency assessments, that's one, and two, that the assessment of the technical um, fitness by professionals, even parliament itself seeking different professionals, should be. Without that, we'll just be postponing this and of course kicking it out to another dark arrangement, uh, certain lawyers, certain places, and then we'll have another agreement that will bring grief to Kenyans again. All right. Prof, since June 25th, when there was uh, the Gen Z protests, the day, uh, you know, parliament was breached, there has been a lack of trust between especially young Kenyans and the government. And uh, young Kenyans have seemingly, you know, uh, opposed almost every government decision. Um, do you think, with, with everybody agreeing that we need to upgrade our infrastructure, like the, 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 the airports and the transmission power lines, um, do you believe there can be some kind of consensus between the government and its plans and the people and how they understand how the government plans to do things? Uh, the Kenya National Commission on Human Rights at the beginning of the Gen Z protests said that there is widespread anger, mistrust, anxiety among Kenyans. And uh, the anti-finance bill was just a manifestation. It wasn't it. Mm -hmm. 